Okay. Okay. So I think uh, I think we should start. Um, so thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, we have a great webinar for uh, for you today. So we're joined uh, with me. I have my colleague uh, Costa, who's the head of sales for ShareWeb Services. Uh, we're, we're also joined by Mike Luz uh, from Veeam. And uh, essentially today, we'll, uh, we're going to present to you ShareWeb's new uh, backup to service solution, uh, so Microsoft 365 backup powered by Veeam. Um, we'll begin the, the session by discussing a bit uh, the, the solution itself. Uh, it's going to be uh, covered by uh, Mike from Veeam. Um, and then uh, after uh, the solution has been discussed, I'll pass the presentation to, to Costa, who's going to go over a bit uh, the shower portion, the, the value add, and uh, the promotions that are available uh, uh, to you uh, when you subscribe to, uh, to, this, new, uh, to this new product. So uh, throughout the presentation, uh, feel free to, to type your questions in the chat. Uh, I'll stop and uh, ask the questions to our panelists. Um, but just so you know, we also have some time reserved at the end for a uh, Q&A session. Uh, so without further ado, I'll, uh, I'll start uh, today's presentation. Um, so we'll start with, like I mentioned, a short introduction. Uh, we'll go over then to, uh, the, the, the Microsoft 365 backup part by Veeam. Uh, the component that's being added by ShareWeb will then jump through to a small to a short demo and then we'll finally do a Q&A. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Mike, uh, Global Product Marketing Manager uh, for the Veeam software uh, team and uh, Mike, uh, to you. All right, thanks, uh, thanks Roman. And greetings, everybody. So like Roman said, uh, my name is Mike Lewis. I'm a senior product marketing manager here uh, with the Veeam Cloud and Service Provider Program. And super excited to be on the call today. Always nice to collaborate with our partners like SureWeb and, and share some great information. So um, Roman, if you did want to jump to the next one, I, I just wanted to walk everyone through what it looks like from the Veeam perspective um, on how we empower our service providers with industry-leading data protection for Microsoft 365. and before I get into what's on the slides here, I just wanted to mention, you know, Veeam is the most trusted provider of backup solutions that deliver modern data protection. And that's a pretty big, bold claim, but um, folks choose Veeam for a lot of um, these challenges, overcoming a lot of these challenges. And really what it does is it comes down to a few simple key principles, simple, flexible, reliable, and powerful. And when you have all of those principles together, you get a very powerful solution. Um, so these principles really drive home a solution that's easy for, um, for both the service providers and our end users to use, right? And starting with flexible. Being flexible inside an environment is paramount to move at the speed, speed of digital transformation. Um, and Veeam is really good at this because we're agnostic. We really fit into any different environment that's out there, a lot of different solutions, a lot of different hardware solutions all the way from the large enterprise, all the way down to the mom and pop shop of businesses that have like, you know, 10 users. And then we get into reliable, right? So our original tagline was, it just works. And it's true. Veeam has been battle tested in some of the most complex environments and it's proven itself to be reliable time and time again. Um, and when you put these principles together, like I mentioned, you get that powerful solution uh, that's been proven to protect data wherever it may reside. So if we look at this slide here, I call it the trophy case, which helps us kind of back up the claim that Veeam is really the most trusted provider of backup recovery and data management solutions in the industry. Um, and we're especially proud of our sixth consecutive year of being named the Magic Quadrant Leader by Gartner. Um, and if you look at the you know, G2's accolades as well, it really aligns to, um, to those principles that I spoke to before. And those are peer reviewed. So I mentioned the tagline, it just works before. And that wasn't a marketing tagline, believe it or not. We got that tagline from the peer reviews coming out of G2, and we just ran with it because a lot of the reviews were, it just works, and that was it. So we went ahead and utilized that tagline for, I think, about six years. Um, we recently changed it to kind of help um, help fit the platform as it expands. Um, but when it's speaking about the platform, right, so we started out as 
agentless VM backup. And that was really the primary solution for a couple of years. But then the platform has extended, right, into SaaS solutions like Microsoft 365, what we're talking about today. Um, soon to come, Salesforce backup. We're also extending into the public cloud to protect Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud environments as well, too. So the platform's really taken off. Um, but today, we really wanted to focus on um, backing up Microsoft 365. But first, uh, if you want to move to the next slide, Roman, I did want to talk about um, our innovation with, from, for service providers, right? So starting back in 2010, Veeam realized that service providers were leveraging our products. Um, it was a little bit more complex, though. So Veeam decided, because we're a 100% channel company, that we had to do some things for our service providers to really help them accelerate. Um, and if you notice there, around 2013, that was the first integration with VMware vCloud Director. So our service providers that had hosted infrastructure and data centers were able to incorporate Veeam into their VMware vCloud Director solution and really scale that multi-tenancy approach um, optimally. And then if you move into 2014, um, offsite backup, you know, it was always complex, especially when it came to the networking and building VPNs and things like that, just to get data from the customer site to the service provider's data center. Um, so Veeam noticed that and they decided to create Veeam Cloud Connect. And basically what that is, it's a package networking solution. Um, it's fully encrypted over a TLS um, certified line. And you know, you can you can catch those backups in the data center as a service provider. And it was basically a next, next finish setup. And it's super easy. The customer could simply select their service provider from the drop down menu and start sending those backups that way. Um, and as we move through the years, you know, we started to create other uh, tools for our service providers, um, specifically Veeam Service Provider Console, which provides that remote management and monitoring capabilities as well as billing, licensing, all the things that you need to run um, a backup as a service offering. Uh, and those, and all of those solutions just progressed over the years. Um, Veeam, in 2018, Veeam added Veeam Cloud Connect Replication, which offered that disaster recovery as a service piece as well. So just continuing to innovate, uh, we do have some products coming up soon. Um, v, uh, Veeam version 12 of Veeam Backup and Replication, which I'm sure you've probably heard about that if you're obviously uh, following industry trends and industry news, you know that's coming. Um, but today's talk, we're gonna talk about Veeam Backup from Microsoft 365. So if you wanna jump to the next one, Roman, we can, we can start to get into that a little bit too. So um, as service providers on the call, you probably know that um, Microsoft 365 does not take care of protecting the customer's data. But the flip side of that is we found out that a lot of customers, they don't know that, right? They think, oh, I went to Microsoft. I'm paying for this month by month. Microsoft should be taking care of everything, the infrastructure, the network, my data. So if I ever lose an email or if I have to go back and, and find something, I can't find it, I'll just call Microsoft and they'll take care of it. Um, but what they find out is when they call Microsoft support, Microsoft says, no, the data is your responsibility. And Microsoft has even um, shared that with their communities saying, we recommend you have a third party backup when it comes to protecting your data. We're gonna keep the lights on, but when it comes to your emails, your SharePoint, your OneDrive, all your data, it's just like as if it was on-prem. You still have to make sure you have a backup solution in place to take care of it. Um, and you know, Microsoft offers a few things, litigation hold, the recycle bin, which we've come to find out a lot of a lot of customers actually rely on that. Um, I think it's like 55% uh, of customers are not protected and like 20% was, they were relying on the recycle bin for their backup solution, which they would have never done that on-prem. So that goes to show you that thinking that they were with Microsoft Cloud, that everything was protected, which it, in this case it wasn't. So you can animate that slide, Roman. It'll kind of show you here um, the customer's responsibility and what's yeah, exactly. So you separate the data from all the infrastructure. You can see that Microsoft takes care of that infrastructure, but the responsibility of the data falls in the customer. So as service providers, this is a great opportunity to go back to those customers that you may be offering Microsoft 365 to and have this conversation because they may not know it. And this is also a great opportunity for an upsell. You know, if you're, if you're looking to sell backup to them for their Office 365 data, this is a perfect um, scenario to talk to them about. 
Um, and if we jump to the next one, we'll kind of get into a little bit of uh, the reasons behind it. So a shared responsibility model, and it just goes back to what I was talking about, right? So Microsoft's responsibility, you can see it all the way across the top. They're responsible for the infrastructure security, making sure that the lights are on, um, keeping everything up and running, the hardware, the networking. Um, but then the responsibility, the data, of course, you can see that falls on the customer. It says your responsibility here, but since we're talking to MSPs on the call today, um, you know, you just make that your customer's responsibility. But you can see that they're responsible for all the back, all the data and, and all the backups and making sure that those are secure as well. All right, so when we looked at the seven reasons why you need a Mac Microsoft 365 backup, uh, you can build this one out. I think you got to click through it. This is the one I was telling you about before, Roman, that, yeah, there you go. Thanks. I should have taken the animations off that. All right, so you can see here the seven reasons why you need a backup um, uh, policy in place for your Microsoft 365 data. And, you know, everything from accidental deletion to, you know, internal, external threats, you know, you may have, everyone's got, um, you know, everyone's got, got good assumptions, but, you know, when sometimes good attentions, but sometimes, you know, you get those malicious actors here and there. Sometimes it's just accidental deletion that causes these issues, right? Um, but then there's also retention, there's policy um, guidelines, you know, security guidelines, things like that, that the company has to meet. So having a backup in order to find those in the event that there's an auditing, audit uh, trail or something like that, um, this actually having a backup in place, like micro, uh, being backup from Microsoft 365, definitely helps out in those scenarios. Yeah, so this came from an independent survey that we did um, here at Beam just last year. And you can see the number one cause of data loss is that accidental deletion of data. Um, and then it kind of works its way down from there. But the preparation against cybersecurity attacks, you know, ransomware is a big buzzword right now. And you can see that a lot of organizations are preparing themselves in the event that that happens. And they're trying to say it's not going to be if, it's when, right? So you can see that comes in at number two. Um, and then even malicious users and, and internal threats comes in at number three. So um, those are the three top reasons why a lot of these organizations are protecting their Microsoft 365 data. And this is also good information to bring back to your customers, too, when you're having that conversation, right? Um, kind of showing them these trends. And all of this can be found in the uh, Cloud um, Protection Trends Report that Veeam puts out. You, know, you can simply Google that and find it. Um, it. That report, you can download it, and it's got all this information in there as well. So um, you can share that with your partners and or your customers and um, you know, let them know that these are the three top reasons. And then this one here, I put in here, it's same, same report, right? That Cloud Trends report you can see at the bottom there. Um, data is being held for longer, right? So you can see that organizations are starting to hold their data, you know, up to three years and, and even starting to climb up to five years for that retention hold. A uh, lot of um, regulatory compliance and security issues cause, are causing them to keep their data for a lot longer. So we're starting to see that those retention mandates um, are being increased, and that's causing folks to have to keep their data for a, for a lot longer. So, you know, I, I would assume that next year, we're gonna see that five-year mark climb even further. So being back up from Microsoft 365, right? So you can see here, um, this is just a slide that's basically the messaging around it. So you can protect your Microsoft 365 data from all the things that I just talked about, accidental deletion, security threats, uh, making sure that you're, you're maintaining um, the retention policies and filling those gaps as well and then quickly restore those items and files as needed. And then also at the bottom, meet that legal and compliance requirements as well too. So um, we jump to the next one, Roman, I think I get into, yeah, so so restores, right? So we all, we talk about backup, but you know, what's, what's backup without being able to restore it? And we introduced a new self-service restore portal um, about a year ago. And basically what this does, as an MSP, you know, you're getting tickets all the time. And like, I, I need this email. I, I lost this email or I lost this file. Can you, you know, can you restore this for me? And it's just very time consuming. And you're working through those tickets. Um, with self-service restore, the customer, as long as you trust them, right, you'll be able to go in and re make those small restores as needed with the emails and the files, and things like that. Not all customers you know, you don't trust all your customers, depending on it's a small business and they don't really have a lot of IT knowledge. You may not want them in there doing that, but, you know, that's that's always to your control. 
as well too. So um, that's one of our, our newest features that was added in the V6. And I think if we jump to the next one, I think we're moving into Costa's slide. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Costa now, and he's going to talk about SureWeb Solution uh, with me. Well, my video should be kicking in. Thanks, Mike. I pre really appreciate that. Roman, do you want to go to this next slide? There we go. Great. So um, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending where you are in the in the universe right now, but uh, we're really excited here at SureWeb to be launching our one of our newer solutions around backup as a service. Uh, and just like every other solution that SureWeb has done, we're looking at our MSPs to help uh, empower them so that they can uh, so that they can focus on selling and growing their businesses. And one thing that we've done with our new Veeam solution is we've taken a lot of the headaches out. Again, we're managing in the solution today for the M365 backup, all the infrastructure is managed by us, maintained by us. Uh, we're giving you the ability of leveraging the Veeam software uh, where a lot of you already have experience with it. So there's not really a lot of things to relearn. Um, it's just kind of tweaking on the way you're potentially using it. Um, and so in that, you know, go to market is going to be relatively quickly for you to offer this to your client base. Uh, on top of that, because we do span two countries, Canada and the U.S., we are giving you the ability of telling us where your data needs to reside. So it can be set up independently of your main organization. So if you have customers in the U.S. that want their data to stay in the U.S., we can do that. And if you have customers in Canada that also want their data to stay in Canada, we can do that and it won't affect your your uh, your customer base at all. So again, we really want to empower everybody to make sure that things are happening uh, at, a, at a growing pace. We do have our subject matter experts uh, that roll into my team that can get onto calls and help explain the technology, not just internally, but to your customer base as well, if need be. Roman, do you want to go to the next slide? Great. So as we said earlier, or I said earlier, uh, we really try to make this cost effective. Uh, and the way that we're created, the, the, the discount structure is committed seats to the uh, to the, the solution. So we're not looking on an individual basis. We're looking at it as an MSP layer uh, to see what you can commit uh, for backup seats. And, and because of that, we can offer additional discounts based on those com committed seat numbers. Uh, on top of that, there are other ways of getting additional margin uh, for the solution based on a 12-month agreement as well. So again, there's there's multiple ways of, uh, of slicing the solution and your existing Sure Web channel manager can go through all those different offerings. Um, but we do really want everybody to take advantage of this. Uh, and by in that, going to the next slide, we've empowering you again so that you can uh, take hold of this new Veeam solution. So for till November 30th of this year, uh, we'll be offering two free months. So as long as you sign up for the solution by November 30th of 2022, uh, we will offer you um, free billing for, for, for two billing cycles, meaning um, theoretically, if you signed up this month, uh, which is the tail end of October, your free billing cycle would be November, December, and you would get billed for the solution as of December, uh, December's billing cycle. So that's a really good way for you to offer this as an incentive to your client base. As uh, Mike had noted earlier, about 55% of the M365 users today are not backing up for various reasons. Uh, and, you know, it is a it is a misconception while everything's in the cloud, I'm safe. Uh, but again, we've noticed and we've even worked with some of our MSP partners where they've had challenges with their tenants, uh, which were not backed up and some non-happy circumstances happened due to uh, cyber cyber attacks. Uh, so a solution like this would mitigate a lot of need for concern. Um, Roman, next slide, please. So. Um, the whole onboarding process and, and abilities. So when you do onboard through our Cumulus portal, uh, you will receive a welcome email uh, and that information will be passed upon to our provision, cloud provisioning team, which will be in contact with you to help set up the process. Um, and in that also, we'll be able to show you uh, some of the backup reports that you'll be getting. On top of that, um, we can do some demos with our subject matter experts. I will be doing a demo myself uh, a little bit later in the webinar, uh, just to give you a high level 
view of what you could experience. But if we want to get into a deep dive, I do recommend you reaching out to your uh, Sherweb channel uh, channel manager uh, to set up a demo with this the Shmi team. Next uh, slide, Roman. Uh, and so here's just a sample of what the welcome email would look like. Uh, it will give you some parameters and uh, requirements for making sure that everything is set up properly. Next slide. And in this, there will be a, a daily job report or backup report uh, for everything that was done, everything, the status of the backups, the start time, the end time, the job name itself. And in that, you will see it's broken down to by multiple components of uh, components of M365, like Exchange, uh, like SharePoint, and OneDrive Teams is also done in there as well. Um, so in that, you'll be able to see if all the backups were done properly, or if there was an error of some sort that you can contact our team to help follow up on that. Next, Roman. Okay, so we get to the uh, demo portion of uh, our presentation. Bear with us. I'm just, we're just going to switch presenters. I'm going to give uh, Costa the presenter role so he can show you how uh, the solution works. Perfect. Thanks, Roman. Show my screen. Which screen are we going to be showing? It's probably showing the wrong one. So we're seeing your desktop right now. Yeah, one sec here. It's just, oh, there we go. Perfect. Now you should be seeing the right screen. You're seeing the Veeam backup and replication portal? Yes, we yes we are. Yes. Roman? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So for those who are familiar with the with the Veeam backup portal here, here it is. Um, I've already pre-populated some stuff for time, but I'll go into it quickly. So when you need to add a service provider, which we would be, we would click on the service provider tab, and then we would go add provider. And in this DSA, DNS name level, we would be giving providing you the appropriate information. And then you would populate that, hit submit, and then this and this item would be here. Uh, and then we can launch uh, the appropriate explorer. So what Veeam does is they break everything down into explorers uh, for the various products. So explore for Exchange, explore for SharePoint. Uh, an explorer for Teams and for OneDrive. So I'm going to run into the Exchange portal right now. And as you can see, I haven't populated anything, so I wanted to use that as a part of this demo. So we'd add a store. We would go Veeam backup from M365 service providers, which sure what would be. All the information is pre-populated, so life is a little bit easy. You have to copy. Because we have to authenticate against Microsoft, we need to get this code. Uh, we need to go into the device login portal, and then we paste the code. And again, adding some high level of security here. You do need an admin rights for the for the environment, which we can help you set up. And then I am at because it's been a bit since I've logged in. I'm being asked for a password, so I'm just going to grab that password. Give me a sec. And let's hope I am my. Uh, my pizza fingers didn't make a mistake. Great. Everything is authenticated. And now we're going to go back to the exchange. So if you notice here, I can actually choose a, a point in time where I want to authenticate from or restore from. I'm just going to pick the standard. Uh, and then I'm going to hit connect. It'll do its thing. Populate the Explorer. And it has. And now here is the tenant with all the different users that are available. So I'm in administrative mode right now, so I can see all the tenants with all the, all the users within this tenant. I'm going to go find my commonly borrowed tenant. So going too far, I think. Yeah, my buddy Diego. So we're going to go into Diego's environment. As you can see, we have all of Diego's information. Uh, we can click into his inbox, which will populate here as well. And now I, I can see his inbox. So in, in various ways, I can make changes. I can restore emails. I can even search within the event search field if he's got a lot of emails uh, or if I'm looking for something very specific. So as you can see here, I'm going to right click on one of these emails and I have the ability of restoring to the tenant or actually I can restore 
or export. So I'm going to click on this. I can restore into other environments as well. Let's say there's a, an on-premise exchange server. I'm just going to go back here because on this will be some of the other options. And this is a very interesting feature as well. This is used a lot if, let's say, a user has left the organization and you want to review or archive their PST file, you can export one email or all emails to a PST, PST file or as an MSG file or a message file if I want to email this message to someone else. Okay. Um, and then outside of this, as you can see, uh, we have the ability within this is SharePoint. I have the ability within SharePoint to do very similar things with Diego or anybody else's environment. So I'm going to be bugging my buddy Diego again. So you can see everything that Diego has within his SharePoint environment, uh, which is going to take a second. But then again, his OneDrive environment is also here. So we're just grabbing and we can check all his chats, his per personal information. Um, and on top of that, we also have the ability of looking at his various teams information. So, you know, with that, this is, does give the uh, does give the administrator a lot of abilities. Uh, but like Mike had mentioned earlier, we do give you the ability for end user to want to use that ability. So I will move over to the next window. And in this window, it's Diego as well. So this is what Diego would see as his himself. And within that, he can go through his emails and restore all his emails, restore all his files, and within that, actually see what's available. So we're going to go back into Diego's inbox. And as you can see, this inbox is very similar to the one we saw as the administrator. Um, and in that, let's say you have a very sophisticated user. Um, that user could go through this and restore their own files. The other interesting piece or component is if you have multiple administrators that have that have domain rights, they can actually click and you're going to see here, I can change scope. So within the change scope, I actually can become anybody else in this environment or in this tenant. Uh, and in that reasoning, again, I have administrative rights here. This is why I can do it. Um, but in that, if you do have an administrator that's working remote, because you can see this is a, UR, a remote URL, um, someone can support a, a, a user remotely or let's say on a on a clip of a dime, let's say a CEO is traveling and something was lost uh, and they do have a 24 hours help desk, that help desk could go launch into that portal at any place and restore any file. Now, the search parameters are a little bit more limited within this portal. But again, uh, there is a lot of capabilities um, from this easy to use uh, self source portal. So outside of that, I know there's probably some questions that have probably come up based on this demo. So Roman, is there any questions I can answer? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. We do have uh, a couple of questions that came in. Uh, first question is, is this application provided, included in our subscription with the 365 backup? No, the subscription does not include the Veeam uh, replication portal, uh, but we can leverage the uh, the web-based portal. So that we can get into in a little bit more detail, but in the current subscription is not include service, it's an add-on. Okay, very good. Um, so more questions are coming in. Um, next question, Share Web Smart Bundle includes data backup. How does that compare with Veeam M365 backup? So our smart bundle backup is leveraging a, a different technology. Uh, there will be some newer bundles coming in the next 30 to 60 days that will include Veeam backup. Okay. Um, next question. Are you also offering Veeam file backup direct to cloud? Um, in the next, again, uh, in the next rollout, this is one of the first uh newer versions of veeam solutions that we're launching we do have a roadmap with more of the veeam stack that will be offered through our cumulus portal um at that time that solution and others will be available i would say we're looking into the next 30 uh, sorry yeah three to six months on the rollout for various products so throughout that if you do want to get a little bit more granular about that please reach out to your sure web uh, account manager and he can set up a discussion with myself or one of my subject matter experts okay 
Thank you. Another uh, good question here. Is there a web UI for the restore tool or are we limited to Windows only? Uh, at, at to my knowledge, and Mike, maybe you can pop in, I believe it's it's a browser-based tool. So as long as we have yeah. a, an, a, a usable browser, we're, we're okay. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay, uh, thank you. Next question. Can you back up files and folders, uh, non, in parentheses, non-OneDrive? Non-OneDrive. Um, as long as the files are in the M365 tenant, so i.e. files that are attached in Teams, for example, would be backed up. But anything outside of the M365 tenant would not, in this specific solution, will not be backed up. Mike, would you like to uh, to add anything, or should we continue with the, the other questions? Oh, no, we can continue on. I just came on just in, in case there's a question directed to me. Perfect. Uh, next question, and again, I'm very, very happy because the questions are, are keep coming in. Uh, is there unlimited, unlimited storage? Uh, at this time, it is unlimited storage. The standard retention is 12 months, uh, but for additional retention periods, uh, we do have a pricing structure set for that. Um, thank you. Next question. I'm currently, uh, I'm currently using Smart Bundle with all of my customers. Will this product replace the existing online backup in the Smart Bundle? So as I mentioned earlier, the existing Smart Bundle will stay as is today. We will be launching additional bundles that will include Veeam M365 backup as well, but that would be a different SKU. Okay. Um, next question is, um, do we need Veeam licensing? We are currently a Veeam partner. So all you would need for this solution would be the Veeam portal license. Everything else is done by the Sure website solution because again, this is a managed solution or a turnkey style solution where we're managing the infrastructure and the requirements. The only thing that the MSP would need would need, would be the Veeam portal license. And I think there's a follow-up question to that question by the the, the same uh, the same person. Is there a reason why I wouldn't get this license myself? So if I am understanding the question properly, um, the reason to go with this solution and leverage SureWeb's uh, version of it would be that we are leveraging, we're, we're managing the infrastructure, we're managing all the backups, we're managing all the power and retention uh, rules and capabilities throughout North America. So these are things that we're taking off your plate as an MSP to manage so that you can just manage your client's expectations, not the back-end infrastructure. Thank you. If that's what uh, they meant. Perfect, thank you. Um, we have, <laughs> the questions keep coming in, so keep them coming. Um, what is the cost per license on the first tier? So the way that the tiers work uh, is something that we would like to look at, but a suggested MSRP in the U.S., sorry, in Canada would be $3 per user. That's the first tier. That Again, that's suggested MSRP. Uh, that is not partner price points. Uh, and then on in the U.S., it's roughly $210. And again, that's suggested MSRP. Uh, and then your discounts would apply from there. Thank you. Based on your level, um, actually. Perfect. Uh, next question. How do we access the administrative portion of this portal from the web uh, then without the this application you just demoed? I don't know if that was clear. I can try to read it again. How do we access the administrative no, it is, portion? So, so the Veeam uh, backup and rep replication portal, which was the first tool that I showed, um, is a is a tool that you would need to get, and this is a Veeam solution. Um, the web based portal that I showed, well, they're all web based, but the 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 web based, what I would say, um, self serve portal is a URL that we would leverage to the MSP for their specific tenant slash users. Okay, that makes sense. 
Okay. Um, when will we have access to pricing for the new bundles, which will include this backup option? The smart bundles are being created today or as we speak um, and will be added to Cumulus and will be available today, though the Veeam price points are available in Cumulus uh, as the official launch for the product was October 12th. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, not the end user tool, yeah. the admin portal that you were in via remote desktop. That's a follow-up question to the two previous follow-up uh, to the two yeah, previous so that that tool that I was in the remote desktop environment is the Veeam backup and restore portal. Um, that is a, a license that would need to be purchased. Okay. Um, does it back up team chats? Yes, it does back up chats. It backs up everything within the M365 environment. Okay. Um, how's it priced? Per mailbox, per SharePoint, or OneDrive site? It's, it's per user within the tenant. Okay. Um, and each user has unlimited storage, just so you know. Okay. Uh, is this the same as the on-prem Veeam server backup? Um, it's similar, but again, the functionality is the same. The way that it is priced and consumed is the variant. And that's because of the, the back end that SureWeb is doing today. Okay. Um, how frequent are the backups? Right now, the backups are done daily. Um, uh, so that pricing is regardless of SharePoint slash mailbox slash OneDrive, the uh, two point yes, ten that, per user. That, that price per yeah, that price per user. It's for that tenant. So if the I'll give you an example. If that user has six terabytes of SharePoint and one terabyte of email. They're still going to be the same price as if that user had 500 megs of email and two megs of SharePoint. Okay. Um, My Power Automates, Power Apps, Dataverse, or Microsoft Forms will also be backed up. Uh, to my knowledge, I'd have to do a little bit of digging. Uh, I, but from what I understand, anything within the M365 tenant. Now, Mike, I might push that to you. Are you aware of if those like, components are backed up within the tenant? Yeah, it just depends. If you're get, if they're backed up through via like SharePoint, or it depends on what platform um, those applications are running on. You can it could get a little complicated. Right now, we don't have anything that's natively um, built. To protect those, but um, I'm sure eventually in the next couple of versions, we're probably going to start including more and more. So I'd be on the lookout for that. Um, but you know, Costa, I mean, there, it's possible. If it, but it just depends on the comp the complexity you want to get into with backing, finding those things. Right? No problem. So what? For, yeah. For, for that user of that person that put the question in, I would re recommend us to have a more deep dive discussion and understand yeah. what the needs are. So I, if you, there will be an email being shown very shortly um, that you can email to. Um, or if you want to reach out to me directly, it's my first initial, my last name at sureweb.com. Uh, and then I can set up a, a more technical discussion to see what your needs are. Okay, thank you. Um, how would I transition to backup as a service from managing my own uh, Veeam backup Office 365? No problem. So our, our, our provisioning team does have some processes in place that they can help you transition from you managing your tenant for us to our solution. Uh, and it's relatively seamless. Okay. Um, follow up to the administrative portion of the tool. So there is no administrative yep. slash multi-tenant system for this other than through the first desktop tool you demoed, which is separately purchased license? Yes. So at this time, uh, you if you want a full-blown sort of management tool, you would be leveraging the Veeam Backup and Restore portal, uh, and that can have the ability of managing multiple tenants. 
uh, within it because you can we can provision each tenant. And again, the provisioning team and the technical team can walk you through that process. Um, but on a per tenant basis, you can leverage the web-based portal that I showed later in my demo. Yeah, thank you. Um, how much is the Veeam license for the restore admin portal? I don't have that price point in front of me at this time. But if again, as I mentioned, if you'd like to get more details on that, you can email me directly at my first initial C, uh, my last name at sureweb.com, and we can set up a, a discussion point to go through the price points. Thank you. Um, is there an equivalent seeding process to managing my own VBO 365? Can you repeat that again, Roman? Sorry. Sure. Is there an equivalent seeding process to managing my own VBO 365? Seeding or seating? Seeding. Uh, so S E E D I N G. The seeding process. Yeah. Um, there is, but we would probably take the next 20 minutes to figure uh, to discuss it. So I, I would recommend us setting up a, a time to go through that requirement uh, so that we can make sure that we're meeting all your needs. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good question here. Can we schedule three to four backups daily? Um, at this current time, uh, we are not going outside the standard backup windows. Uh, but there is discussions of adding that capability. Um, and again, the the clients or the MSPs that have brought this question up as of recently, that had specific needs. So we have look, been looking at that on a case-by-case -case basis. So if there is a requirement, this is something we can have a discussion offline about. Okay. Uh, any NFR or not for resale licenses available for MSPs and for trying the product? So there is there is a trial period, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's no no billing cycles or free service for the next two months or two billing cycles. Um, outside of that, at the end of that program, there will be an NFR launched. Uh, we're just discussing the uh, the methodology for around that. Um, but again, it's relatively easy to set something up like that with your SureWeb channel manager. Okay. Um... A bit of a long question here, and I think part of it we've already answered, but uh, I'm just going to read it out. So are we able to increase sure. backup frequency? Uh, what are the costs for additional retention based on once a day and 12 month retention? The pricing isn't very competitive. OK, uh, so the price point that I did mention was the MSRP. It is not the uh, the MSP's price point. And again, that varies on your discount levels. Um, retention can be increased, but there's, there's again, a, a longer discussion point that we can have uh, about that. So I do recommend setting up a call after, uh, after this uh, to get into more granularity. And, the, and like I did mention earlier, at this current time, the standard frequency is once a day. Uh, we have made some arrangements with other MSPs due to requirements to change that. But again, this is a discussion point that we would have offline. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you may have mentioned this, but where uh, but where is the data stored? Azure, AWS, or other? Uh, it would be other. It's within our infrastructure. So the okay. SureWeb. So SureWeb has a solution called Performance Cloud. This is our infrastructure as a service environment, which is spread out through uh, North America, and we are leveraging that object storage for this backup. And again, the, the the data retention is kept uh, sovereign, so U.S. data is kept in the U.S. if we're if if not specified somewhere else, and Canada Canadian data is stored in Canada if not specified somewhere else. Thank you. Um, do we need to buy licenses for all users, or can we buy licenses only for some users? So anybody who has so. I'll give an example here. If we have a, ten, a Microsoft tenant that's got 500 users in it and you only need a subset backed up, I'll use an example of a school because this has come up recently where the administrative staff wanted their emails backed up but did not require the students 
uh, M365 data to be backed up. We have the ability of excluding uh, certain users, so they're not backed up in that environment. You would not be paying for those excluded users, only the included users. So in this example of 130 people wanted to be backed up and 70 did not, only 30 licenses were required. Thank you. Uh, another question regarding the, the price point. So $2.10 per user per month, regardless of space consumed? Correct. The, the, the storage is unlimited. So again, as my earlier example, if they consume a gig, they're going to pay 210 MSRP. If they consume one terabyte, they're going to pay $2.10 per user MSRP. Okay. Another pricing question. Per using pricing for all tenant users or just licensed users? So I'm, I'm, I'm again... That cost is for users that are in, that are going to be not excluded from the tenant. Um, uh, so, for example, Roman, Mike, and I are in one tenant. If Mike is excluded from the backup, only Roman and I would be paying for licensing. Now, hopefully, that answers the question. Okay. And uh, last question here is. Uh, what are the limitations of the web version versus using the Veeam portal you demoed? Uh, the <clears throat> sorry, the the web-based portal um, is not multi-tenant in the in a similar way where you'd have to log out from the tenant and add a new tenant uh, in the scope. Uh, on top of that, the search parameters are not as granular as the de as the desktop version. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so that was the uh, the last questions we the last question we had. Costa, I'm just going to take okay. over present the poll for a second. For sure. Perfect. So we've covered the demo. Uh, we've covered the uh, Q and A. So as Costa mentioned, uh, we do have this pretty easy to remember uh, address uh, email that you could uh, reach out to us. Uh, there's been a lot of great questions today. Uh, some of you might want to go into a bit more detail, so uh, feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, the, the address is on, on the screen, so veeam at shareweb.com. Um, if you like, if you're interested uh, in becoming one of our one of our partners, uh, feel free to visit us at shareweb.com/partners. Uh, we have a lot more information on how to become a partner. Um, so again, um, any questions that you might have. Uh, feel free to reach out to the team or to Costa uh, uh, directly. Um, you'll see the deck is going to be shared with you after this presentation. So you'll, you'll have the addresses, email addresses of, uh, of Costa and uh, the, the addresses that you see on the screen. So you, you'll be able to reach out to us uh, directly. Um, so uh, this is this actually, I might have a last question that I just saw in the chat. Um, yeah, let's. I think we have. Yeah, we still have time for 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 for. Yeah, we still have five six questions. Minutes. Sure. Uh, so the question is: Shared mailboxes don't need a license. Will those get backed up? Yeah. So shared like mailboxes will get backed up. Um, it within the the collective of the tenant, unless they're excluded. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So. Um, uh, thanks a lot for those who have joined us today. Again, uh, the recording and the deck will be shared with you in the, in the next uh, couple of days. Uh, I personally really, really enjoyed this uh, this presentation. Uh, it's really interactive, a lot of good questions. And one more time, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have further questions. The address is uh, veeam at shareweb.com. Uh, so, we're very happy to have posted this question. Mike, thank you very much. Costa, thanks a lot. And uh, I wish you all a great day. Thanks, everybody.